everyone, and welcome back to another episode where we have not put a block here. Everyone, <laughs> there's a lot of people in the comments that are like, put a block here, and I don't, there's not a block there, there's also not a block there, and there's not a block there, uh, right above uh, Robin here. Anyway, are you smothering the parrot? <laughs> Uh, but I did finish the floor. The house is not done, guys. The house, the house is not done. Uh, in fact, I'm, I made a double bed and now it's off center because I think maybe this wall needs to go. I almost hit you. Uh, this wall needs to go out one block maybe. And I don't enjoy the asymmetry that's happening here with like this and then that. And like, it's, I don't know what I'm doing, but it's not done. I need to build a, an enclosure for Robin. Someone mentioned this in the comments, but I had already seen it between episodes. Uh, but my house is a camel hump. <laughs> my house, my house is a camel hump. I, I don't know. So, you know, we're committed. It's fine. Um, we will continue to build the hump but I think it might need to expand one and then that's when I will finish the roof like I, I will finish it and I will announce that it is done but it's not done it's 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 in progress but I think today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mine because I'm kind of tired of not having well I have full gold armor now but that'll break I'm kind of tired of not having iron uh, you know, there's certain things I wanted to build with uh, either copper or uh, amethyst. I wanted to make a spyglass. I haven't made a clock yet. I don't have redstone. So I think we're going to mine. Wow, you just did a cool spin. Uh, I have some wood, a crafting table. I don't need, I guess I don't need to bring. I'm expecting to die. You know what I mean? Uh, so I don't know if I should bring all of this stuff on me. I should probably use... Oh, I shouldn't bring the bones. I'm not going to find any wolves underground. Shears. Uh, okay, I can bring the seven arrows. 31 bread. I think that's fine. I think what I'm going to do, actually, is I'm going to... Is it almost night? I... No, it's not. I think I'm going to just... It's hard for me to look at questions... There's a lot of questions and it's hard for me to look at them and then talk and narrate. So I, I'm sorry if people don't want me to do it this way, but I don't think I'm going to be addressing the mining. Um, I'm probably going to, who knows, I'm probably going to die. I'm probably going to run into the warden. I'm probably going to find uh, Amethyst Cove thing. Hopefully I find a mine shaft with some chests, with some name tags for Spuds and Rachel. Uh... Oh, someone also told me that we're never going to find a striped wolf up there because the wolves spawn in at gen, so at, at world generation. So that's kind of sad. We've got to like, but you know, we're going to map this place out, see if the mesa expands. This is just going to be like our little port town. Uh, at some point, we'll raid that pillager station. We'll keep exploring. But, you know, this is long overdue. What is this, episode five? four five it's long overdue we need to just i'm planning to go mine so that we just have chests full of coal and redstone and gold and diamonds and we can make all the tools and the armor that we want and we don't have to struggle in that sense anymore so but in the you know in the immediate point we're probably going to struggle because I don't have oh I should have brought a furnace but I'll make a furnace I need torches too we're just gonna mine and I'm gonna start the questions uh, now okay this is from Chris Huxley's would love to ask you a few questions for the mining episode what inspired you to start the UHC series back in 2015 and would you ever organize a reunion it's safe to say UHC had and still has a huge impact on the Minecraft community. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the series as a whole. Oh, uh, well, thank you, Chris. That's very nice to hear. What inspired me to start it? I guess the idea came to me just because 
I played in a lot of UHC uh, competitions at the time, and it was always with the same group of Minecrafters. Um, and not that I had anything against those boys, um, but, but it was always really interesting, particularly being on the call like the hour before the tournament started when everyone was just hanging out. Um, it was like, wow, I really don't have anything to talk to these people about. Like, I love them all to death dearly, but, you know, I was in a very different place in my life. It was kind of just like random me hanging out with all of these like um just you know boys that were all the same age you know I of course never felt like I wasn't welcome um I think just because I was older I don't really I don't really struggle with sort of like any kind of apprehension about you know should I be here is this awkward um that just stuff doesn't really go through my mind, but I knew that it probably would for a lot of other people. And I certainly had a lot of friends. I, I mean, that's not even... I'm not trying to say that everyone else didn't, like, want to join. I'm not sure. I never, like, had the opportunity to really say who should join. I would just show up. I was invited. Um, so I just thought, well, this would be fun. I know a lot of people that aren't invited. And for whatever reason, um, it'd be fun to have a tournament where I invite the people that I want to invite. And I guess, you know, the the moniker for it kind of came out of just sort of like the play on words of switching the C for she. Um, but, you know, it was really a place where, you know, you could have female Minecrafters trans Minecrafters, non-binary Minecrafters. There were a lot of people actually that were, I think, included into the series. And I'm really proud of that actually. Um, and if I would ever organize a reunion, I don't, I don't know. It's really a lot of work uh, to kind of get everyone excited about a specific date and time and concept and time across time zones across the world uh so it'd be really it'd be a lot of work probably um but i i am really happy about every every season that happened thank you for your question uh okay still curbs says this is kind of a silly question but did you ever buy any of those jams from holly jelly christmas it's crazy. That was 2019. I like to watch that video during the winter season. <laughs> yeah, that advent calendars have just become such a huge thing now. And the jam one, I see it every year. And I haven't done it in the last couple of years just because it kind of seemed like they were repeating the jams. But I love jam. I think I bought one of the cherry spice ones that I saw once. I liked that one. I, my favorite was always, I think, the dragon fruit one, but I never found a full-size version of that. So of that particular brand, I don't think I buy many of them. I like to make my own raspberry jam uh, in the summer. And then a jam that I actually recently tried was guava jam. Uh, and I bought a whole jar of that from a company when I was on my book tour. Um, I was in Philadelphia and I found guava jam and it's really, really good. Okay, uh, Monica Mares 9198 Honestly, I think you should also get the original wolf for good measure. You know, have a complete set. I doubt it would be hard, right? Plus, I want to know how common they still are or aren't. Okay, so this is referring to the fact that I said in this world I was going to get the, um, I think, eight new variants of wolves, but I wasn't going to... Um, I almost just said, uh, like, rescue. So a couple of thoughts on this. Like, we definitely will see how common they still are. Like, as soon as we go into like more of a snowy biome i'm sure we're gonna see the original wolf there are like two of the new variants are also kind of white and gray so i feel like i'm actually gonna struggle maybe on 
making sure that I don't accidentally get the original wolf. Um, I kind of, I understand, I'm open, I'm open to it is what I'll say. I understand people saying, oh no, you can't exclude that one. Especially like if this is the only series of mine that you're currently watching, which it's, why wouldn't it be? Because it's the only one I'm consistently posting right now. But I guess I feel like I have the six wolves in Dogcraft that I've had for so long and like, I still, this is going to sound really weird, but like, I still think of those wolves, <laughs> um, like every day. <laughs> Let me explain. Let me explain. Cause th that does sound weird. Um, I used to post Dogcraft on Wednesdays and Saturdays, but of course I, I post it much more rarely now. Um, but I've been working on my Dogcraft inspired book series, um, pretty much consistently since 2017 so i signed my first book deal for it in 2017 and then the first book came out in 2018 the second book came out in 2019 the third book came out in 2020 the fourth book came out in 2021 and then i sold two more books of a spin-off series that was the first series was called wild rescuers the spin-off series is called rescue tales and it's still the same wolves, it's still the same world. And so in that book, um, the first book came out at the beginning of this year, even though I wasn't like consistently posting in 2022 and 2023, I was working on these books um, with Melody, who is the illustrator of Rescue Tales, and she draws all six of the wolves. So those six wolves, uh, Everest, Addison, Basil, Noah, Tucker, and Wink, like they're just literally part of my everyday life because I will wake up and get emails that are like, is this drawing of Basil okay? <laughs> um, and so like, that's just been kind of my, that's been my world for like years and years and years. And so I guess, and because I still have a book coming out and I hope to do more, it doesn't feel like it sort of almost feels like it would be a betrayal. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is gonna make me sound so crazy uh, but it's true it's literally how I feel uh it feels like I would be betraying the original six like I felt like I betrayed them when I bred droplet and splat like have you ever wondered why those wolves just sort of disappeared into the dog guard's house <laughs> like they're my original six wolves that I've had for like 10 years <laughs> in this game. I ha honestly, like this, <laughs> I know it sounds crazy. I have to tell the story eventually of when I went to Brazil and I saw an ocelot, which like, by the way, there's, you know, there's ocelots in Texas, but I wanted to like have a true jungle ocelot experience. And while I was there, the guide that I was with was like, is this, is the ocelot really like your number one? animal that you're wanting to see on this trip uh, because like we're gonna see jaguar and jaguars like that's just an incredible animal and we also saw so many incredible birds really cool other animals and and he was like is it really like an ocelot is really the most important to you and <laughs> i was just like i don't think i can explain this um without sounding crazy but like i've had this 10 year relationship to ocelots looking for them and finding them and them running away like so yes like it will mean the most to me when i see an ocelot so anyway i don't know i, I want to oh molly taking a drink of water for some reason she really is afraid of her water bowl it's a whole I have to help her drink water usually. I don't, I don't want to talk about it. It's crazy. She's a crazy dog. Anyway, the point is that I just, <laughs> I don't know that I can bring myself to get another one of the wolves. And for me, I don't, because like Dogcraft is such an important world to me and like I still occasionally post episodes and I have the books ongoing, I don't feel at all like this series would be incomplete without one of those wolves. If anything, I'm like, oh, then there's an odd number of, <laughs> let's move on. This this question question went awry uh user i don't know is this someone's name or is this just like a randomly assigned youtube user iz2em2dn6f 
<laughs> I'm just gonna say it in case there's someone out there who's like, that's me! <laughs> and all of those letters and numbers mean something to them. Uh, Stacy, I also have a question. Who is your favorite dog, horse, and cat in all of your series? You can only have one. I've just always wanted to ask you that. Dog, horse, and cat. I mean, does Poganip count as a horse? I, w I have to say, if I could... If I could have Poganip in every Minecraft series, I like, I don't know that there's something about, it's a white Pegasus, by the way, if for people who are like, what the heck is a Poganip? Um, and the name Poganip means like, it's this, this weather event phenomenon that happens where it's sort of like all of the trees get the, like almost a layer of frost on them so that they all look like white, but it's not really snow. It's... It's like a white crystallized frost on the trees. It's so beautiful. It happens where I live usually about two or three times a winter. Um, maybe even maybe even like one or two times a winter, honestly. And I always make a point when it does to like drive around and take some pictures. So yeah, I would say that's my favorite horse. Cat? I, I have to say milk toast because I got a white cat in Minecraft and named it Milk Toast and was just like, this is the coolest name for a cat. I don't know why I'm naming my cat Milk Toast uh, because it means timid. And then I found a cat like in a parking lot and I don't like cats, <laughs> but I kept him and I named him Milk Toast and I've had him for however many years now since i guess since 2015 uh favorite dog that's really tough i'm assuming you mean dog not wolf i don't know i really liked um this is so random but i really liked the dog violet in dogcraft i'm pretty sure that i named her after i went um to disneyland with the with the folks at Disney and one of the other creators that they brought along had a service dog named Violet who was a uh, Newfoundland and so like I got to basically hang out <laughs> at Disneyland with this dog which was just like <laughs> my dream come true to be like VIP access around Disneyland and like we were there after the park closed and obviously they're you know, Violet's owners were also very nice, <laughs> but I was just like, that's a cool dog. Um, I really like, I really think I like big breeds. I don't know if I could handle owning one. I've sometimes thought like, well, you know, I treasure all of the time that I have left with Molly and hopefully it's a, a several more years. She's 13. And I would say that like in the last year or so, I've kind of been like, oh, I don't know how much more time I'll have with Molly. And some of her recent veterinary visits, I was like, oh, like possibly years and years, <laughs> uh, which is really, really nice. Uh, she had blood work and the vet was just like, I don't like this dog's blood looks perfect. <laughs> like, this is weird that she's 13. But I've, I've always been like, if Molly wasn't around and I still had my cats, I would want to get another dog, but I wouldn't want to get a dog that the cats, like the cats don't really like, like they like Molly, they're like they'll tolerate Molly, but they don't really like my dad's dog, like they don't like dogs really. And so I was like, well, it can't be a dog that would like chase them because that would be mean for the cats to be like, finally, we have the house to ourselves. And then me just be like, look, I got this like, <laughs> like dog with an incredibly high prey instinct. Uh, I wouldn't do that to them. So I've always thought that getting a huge breed, like a breed that wants to spend most of its time outside or just a breed that's really lazy or just kind of not, <laughs> doesn't have the fastest reflexes so that the cats can sneak around it while it's sleeping. Like that's the way that I would go. So like St. Bernard, Newfoundland, uh, Great Pyrenees, kind of like one of those dogs. I feel like I feel like either a Great Pyrenees, I don't know if a Newfoundland is a good guard dog, but I know my neighbor has a Great Pyrenees who I love, and um, and that's a guard dog. But yeah, I feel like that would be cool to have a dog that was sort of like, I will protect this human and 
her spoiled cats. I don't know if Newfoundlands are like that. But if they are, then I think that's the one I would lean towards. How did this? Okay, <laughs> Violet. Violet the Newfoundland. Yeah. But it's really hard to, it's hard to rescue a big dog that also is a puppy because one, you don't know how big it's gonna get, but two, I would wanna make sure that I could train it around cats before it was too old. So anyway, whatever. Okay, next question. Alley Cat 13434 What is your goal as a writer? Do you plan to make books more geared toward young adults? Uh, love you and thank you for an amazing childhood. Yeah, I mean, I definitely have some other projects that I've been working on that I hope can kind of get going soon in like a bigger way than they have been. I, I mean, I do have more like, I do have more children's literature ideas but I definitely I had a YA series idea that came to me like in it was like 2013, but I just, that's such a, there's so much world building and, and to do multiple books, it, like it's not really my passion. You know, there's always a finite amount of time and I really need to be caving multiple hours a day you know what i mean so that's i'm kind of limited in what i can do because of all the caving you know <laughs> i'm kidding um but yeah no I, d I definitely have other goals and hopefully i can do something that's geared more towards i don't know about young adult but i do oh, actually i do and like maybe not a book but like i've written more of a short story that i think young adults would like um and then maybe something more like just geared towards just adults. A doodle dog art. Stacy, you mentioned in the last episode that you have an interest in birds now and that you have a ton of birds visiting your cabin. That's amazing. I don't really have a specific question right now, but I do have a request to just talk about birds uh, because I have an interest in birds too. And I'd love, love, love to hear your stories. Anyway, I'm just excited about this series. Thank you. Uh, you know, <laughs> uh, I, I had an idea. I was like, oh, I'm going to take pictures of all the birds around my cabin and then put the pictures on top of the video so people know what I'm talking about. But honestly, if I keep doing things like that, I just won't post these episodes once a week. I'm, I'm just I'm being honest. Like I just it'll it'll overwhelm me and not overwhelm. That's the wrong word. But you know, I still have like, <laughs> I still have like 18 moss quests to edit. You know what I mean? So to answer your question, I'm, or just to talk about birds, I'm going to name a bunch of birds right now. And you're just going to have to Google them to know what I'm talking about. If you care, if you don't care about birds, then like skip a minute or something or just <laughs> five. Um, I didn't used to care about birds either. By the way, I never really circled back to the thing about clipping. Apparently there's a lot of people and I'm happy to know this that have pet birds and don't clip their wings. I didn't really know that that was an option. I guess I'm glad to hear that it's kind of looked at the same way as like declawing a cat of like, cause that's how I feel about it. I feel like it seems, I haven't done enough research cause just cause I, I don't own birds and I, I never will. Um, but I would assume that clipping a bird's wings is cruel. Um, so, sorry if you do that um i feel like in one of my most recent books i was like i think it's like stacy and stacy little stacy in the books was like i think that people should only have dogs and cats as pets because you know we've overbred them and so those should be the pet options and like you shouldn't have birds or snakes or i don't know what other animals I said and my editor was like do you really want to say that because there's a lot of people that have a lot of other pets and I just was kind of like uh yeah no sorry not not I'm not sorry but honestly I've created a bird sanctuary uh, accidentally at my cabin well the first couple of years I was at the cabin it was weird it was like there were no birds honestly I, I started to kind of go this is creepy. Like, are there, am I at too high of an elevation that birds don't like to hang out here? Um, occasionally you would get like vultures that would circle. Once a year, there's like pelicans that, 
that do like a migration. Um, there's bald eagles, there's ospreys. I've seen and heard an owl, but that's rare. But I was just like, where are all the little birds? Uh, and then over the years, I don't know whether it was just me paying more attention or that truly like the birds came back, but I now have uh, just like a complete stable of birds. <laughs> like I always have black capped chickadees and they're my favorite. Um, and I also have red breasted nut hatches and pine siskins and dark eyed juncos and just f house finches for days. Um, and I don't like they come and go. Um, then occasionally I will get a uh, northern flicker, which is really an exciting bird. Um, it's been hanging out around my house for the last couple weeks. Uh, in the spring, I get uh, lazuli buntings, um, which is going to be in my second book. <laughs> Spoiler alert for all the bird fans. <laughs> Uh, what else? I get, well, so right now, the bird that showed up, it was crazy. One of the, this bird came one day and I was like, what in the world is that? It's an evening grosbeak. And they have these insane yellow eyebrows. It looks like an Animal Crossing villager. Like, I mean, I'm telling you, like insane yellow eyebrows on this bird. And one came and I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. And then the next day, like five or six came and I was like, oh my gosh, that's so awesome. And then I kid you not, the next day there were 50. <laughs> and I was like, oh, oh no, uh, because they're big. The other birds that I mentioned, like the chickadees and the nuthatches, they're pretty small birds. Uh, but the evening grosbeaks are like the size of a American robin. Um, which I have a robin occasionally in the spring and I have, um, uh, oh, what are they called? A something, something, a spotted toey occasionally in the spring. Right now I have a spotted toey that's hanging out, but no, these evening grosbeaks have been at my cabin for like the last month and I've spent so much money on bird seed and <laughs> they're, they're great. Like they're awesome looking. They're yellow and gray and white. The lazuli buntings are really pretty too. They're like a blue and a really um, soft kind of red. Uh, oh, and then I also have Stellar's Jays occasionally. Ooh, on my feeder this spring, I had three Stellar's Jays one time and I was super excited about that. Yeah, I've just gotten really into birds. And, and obviously the trip that I went to on Brazil was primarily a bird watching trip. And I saw some, I saw some crazy birds on that trip that I'll have to talk about at some point. But yeah, those are the birds of the cabin. I had some ducks once, two ducks showed up once, and a dove showed up once. Um, I kind of feel like uh, a woodpecker too. I don't remember what kind. I'd have to look up what kind. Um, not different from the Northern Flicker. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. Oh, magpies. There's some magpies. Um, <laughs> do you want to know a funny story? Once I was in Santa Fe, New Mexico at a silent writing retreat. And there was this girl from ten Tennessee, I think. And the assignment was like, go outside of the writing center and, you know, walk around in silence. And then come back in and write like a, a haiku or something. And she comes back in and she writes about this bird and she's like, you guys, this was the most beautiful bird. Like it was, it was navy blue and white and majestic and I've never seen a bird like it before. And we were like, everyone was like, we get to break our silence at this point. And everyone was like, oh my gosh, like that bird sounds incredible. Like what did it look like? She had white and black and blue and... It was big and, and so beautiful. And we were trying to figure out what the bird was. We were like, what could this bird have been? And then I was like, wait a minute. Is it a magpie? <laughs> and everyone was like, oh. <laughs> I don't know. Are there no magpies in Tennessee? I gotta Google this now. 
this isn't gonna work. Are there magpies in Tennessee? I don't think that there might be magpies in Tennessee. No, I think there are. I don't know. Anyway, she didn't know what a magpie was. And you know, they are majestic. They are beautiful. But for some reason we were all like really disappointed <laughs> that we were like, oh, it's just a magpie. It's like, you know, going to New York and being like, I saw this bird and it was gray and white and had the biggest eyes. And, and you know, I'd be like, is it a pigeon? Who's listening to this? Honestly, what am I talking about? Okay, so that's the birds that I was talking about. Um, I feed them uh, sunflower seeds, black sunflower seeds, primarily in my feeders in the back. My feeders in the back are set up like a little town. <laughs> this makes me sound crazy. I'm just saying that there's like a lighthouse and a church and a, a barn and um, like a apartment building. Like they're just the feeders themselves are like a town. And then in the front is where I just hang like the giant, like huge, huge feeders that I don't have to fill that often. And those I actually buy like a sizzling habanero pepper bird seed, which apparently in the winter just keeps their body temperature higher, I think. The lady that I buy the bird seed from was like, oh, I just love feeding the birds too. But like, isn't it sad when the hawks get them? And I was like, what? <laughs> and she's like, you know, sometimes a hawk comes and just tears them to shreds. And I was like, that doesn't happen at my cabin. Like, I think that the trees kind of offer some protection. Like, you maybe shouldn't put out bird seed <laughs> if, if you're just attracting birds to then just get ripped to shreds by hawks in your front yard. Like, stop feeding them. Anyway. Okay, let's have another question. Bonkers asks... Wait, is this a- this might not be a question. Genuinely so nice to see this channel again. It was my childhood. Not afraid to admit that coming back to this, even as a junior, is still as lovely as when I was in elementary. Really nice to watch the beginnings of a new series and to see all the comments again. Thank you so much, Stacy, for being so pivotal in my childhood. Thank you so much. And that was not a question. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but that's really nice. And I find it really uh, flattering that people are still here and want to, you know, listen to this, listen to me talk about birds. Uh, Narnia Edmund PWK. Hey, Stacy. I love your videos and this new series is great. I have a question. A month ago I went gluten free for health reasons and I was wondering if you had any good tips for some gluten free snacks. I love the videos. Uh, yeah, so I have celiac disease and I've known for about 10 years. It's not a maybe thing. And that's kind of one of the most frustrating things about it is I feel like friends and family are kind of like, oh, you really have to be that strict. And it's like, yeah. I will get very ill and and be ill for like a solid week and that's not fun um so I'm really really careful because it's in everything I would say for the last like eight years I've not eaten anything that's not certified gluten-free or just foods that don't have gluten that's my number one tip is just find the foods that you like that are naturally gluten-free because it's sneaky, right? Like there's so many like candies and soups and salad dressings that have gluten that you just wouldn't even think. Someone the other day was like, oh, here's some sour belts, you can have them. And I was like, I, I know that I can't. <laughs> and then they looked and they were like, oh my gosh, this just contains wheat, you know, sour belt candy. And I was like, yep. I ate a lot of popcorn. Usually like a cheese puff isn't um, gluten. A, a tortilla chip isn't gluten. Um, and it's so easy now. Like even like Walmart. Walmart has such a good gluten-free section. Dogman5392. Hey Stacy, do you enjoy gardening? And if so, what do you like to plant? Hmm. Well, first and foremost, I enjoy gardening, but it's all it, like to really garden is a lot of work. And I know that because my grandmother had to garden with tomatoes, strawberries, raspberries, zucchini, carrots, peas, uh, squash, um, and I mean like 300 acres of potatoes. 
Uh, so gardening's really, really hard. Peas are really hard. She also grew green beans. I would say I'm not a gardener. Um, but I do enjoy dabbling. But similar to like my thing about my <laughs> cabin originally being inhospitable to birds, I can't grow. I'm in a very tough zone. I am I am in the mountains. And so I literally can't grow quite a few things. And I didn't know that when I bought my cabin. I wish I had done more research because I, I really can't grow a lot. So I don't know that I garden really at all, but I did this past fall, I did plant a lot of bulbs and it's like, it's still snowing by the way, where I live <laughs> in April. Um, but I, it's the snow melted enough the other day. It has since snowed again, but it did melt the other day that I could see that some of the flowers that I planted last fall actually are coming up, which is super exciting. So I like planting bulbs. I don't really plant anything else. Um, just flowers. If I had somewhere in the future, I think that I would plant, I would never plant carrots. I love carrots when they're fresh from the garden, but it's, I can't deal with the disappointment of like pulling up a carrot and it being the world's tiniest carrot. It's, they're never, they're never big carrots. They're always tiny little lumps. And then you have to wash them and get all the dirt off of them and cut them. And you have like, you have like two bites of carrots. So it's not worth it. But I think I would like to plant raspberries and peas because peas are a lot of work but I think that they're worth it I really love peas and I think that it's only because I grew up eating my grandmother's fresh peas I think that's probably why I like peas in general and because other people are like ew peas oh I think she also grew radishes too but I don't really like radishes okay uh, my question for the mining episode would be, if you could remove one block or feature from Minecraft, what would it be? Oh, that's a good question. If I could remove a block? I mean, I guess because I love wolves so much, honestly, like I love wolves. Here's what I would do. I would do the same thing that they did to ocelots to wolves. I would make it so that when you tame a wolf, it becomes a dog variant. And I would keep wolves wolves um that's like the complete antithesis of this entire series i would make it so that wolves are wild and protected stole 2j here's a few q a questions who is your biggest role model in your life will you continue moss quest or new life how are you and your animals doing that's a lot i could talk for half an hour about that every time i watch one of your videos i'll always consistently start feeling happy and content to keep doing what you do and we will continue to love you no matter what you choose to do thank you so much role model in my life was my grandmother will i continue moss quest or new life <laughs> yes i'm so sorry i have more moss quests and i have just a handful of more new lives that i will post just to like finish it uh and my animals are doing amazing yeah i guess that's it okay mo m m m j o Riley 2681 uh, would you ever consider reading audiobooks I've been letting these episodes play while I'm crocheting and it's nice to have a voice in the background while I work especially a familiar one I grew up hearing well I'm going to take this opportunity to say that all of my books all five of my books are available as audiobooks and it would mean so much to me uh, if you got them um, and it's me. And so if you haven't read the books, no worries, I understand. Um, or if you're thinking that they're not for you, I would say I'm the reader of the audiobooks. And I think if you like this series that you would like them. Uh, Grace Sampson 8264 just for fun, if you could have any mythical or exotic animal as a pet, what would you want? Hmm. Maybe like a griffin? Is that the one that's like an eagle with like a cat or like a bear with wings? Oh, or just P Poganip. Pogan I'd have Poganip. 
in real oh my gosh can you imagine owning a pegasus in real life yes i would own poganip in real life i'm not i'm not a horse person but i would be a pegasus person uh van he ho 1322 would you ever do face cam for this series p.s i love your videos stacy they always make me feel safe and warm not in a weird way <laughs> um no i wouldn't do i've seen people say like do face cam or live stream this or um yeah i think to be honest this is the way that i'm this is the way that i knew i would actually do it with minecraft music with no editing with no face cam not being live is what I knew that I could actually commit to and remain consistent. So that's what it is. Um, Katie Funk 5260. It's been so amazing to see your videos every week. I've missed Dogcraft and even just watching you play Minecraft. Do you still play Animal Crossing? And if so, would you ever stream it again? Watching the streams brings back so much nostalgia. I, I didn't, I stopped playing Animal Crossing for years. And then I just started like a week ago and I was like, you know, I got to get the villagers that I wanted and catch up showed up in my campground today. And I was like, no way I have to take catch up. Right. But then I messed up and she wanted to kick off Hazel and I should have quit the game and restarted because I want, um, I want Rolf or Bones or Eric to leave. And and now I had to say goodbye to Hazel, but I was like, oh, I kind of want to get catch up. Um, anyway, the point is, I kind of regret never streaming Animal Crossing on my main channel. I did it on Twitch, and I kind of, at the time, was like, I don't know that people want to see something other than Minecraft, but looking back, I'm like, oh, I, w I just wonder how it would have done, because I really liked it. I really, really liked it. I had, like, a dog island going. Um, so yeah, I do still dabble, but I think I'm just going to keep it for my, I think it's just like my little, although it's hard to see, it's hard to see with my eyesight, but I think I'm just going to keep it on my little switch. Uh, Lair, Larry, nobody. What has been the hardest part mentally doing YouTube for so many years? I hope you still know we all love you and that you do, we all, <laughs> I can't read. I hope you still know we love all that you do and will support you through all your endeavors. That means a lot to me. Um, <laughs> that's all I'll say. Um, the hardest part mentally of doing YouTube for so many years. Um, you know, something's interesting. Recently, I've been hearing a lot of people have been being nostalgic about my videos on TikTok, which is not a place that I am. I would say that that's been an interesting part is kind of like, obviously I sort of am, I'm a private person and I moved to a cabin in the mountains and I'm not in Los Angeles anymore and I didn't really want to be mega, you know, popular. And I made decisions accordingly, but then I kind of like was like, oh, maybe I did it too good because I really don't hear from anyone anymore about anything. And so then I was like, oh no, I probably have to go get a job. Um, and that's just, it's just been interesting to hear like that there's still so much support for me because I think mentally I did go through like a little bit of a time where I was like, well, I think it's kind of over because I just don't really, you know, you get the messages that are like, I forgot you existed. <laughs> it's like, okay, that's fine. But um, yeah, I think going out on this most recent book tour like three or four years after my previous one it was like wow there no there's still a lot of people that's really nice so i would say just the doubt that you should be you never want to stay at the party too long you know what i mean <laughs> um so the doubt that you should still kind of do this as opposed to doing something else is maybe the hardest maybe that's the hardest part mentally uh, Nino's Cruz, what do you think about being a YouTuber and what makes you do it? Um, it's interesting. I mean, I could talk a long time about that too because I'm sort of maybe part of the last generation of YouTubers that didn't like mean to do it as a career. 
Um, and I never considered myself to be an like an older generation of YouTube, but obviously I am at this point, but I, I didn't think of myself that way, but I definitely wasn't someone who was like, oh yeah, that's a job I want to have. Um, the way that I think a lot of people look at it now. Um, but what makes me do it is that, so if we're, if we're talking about like life in general, for me, I wanted to, I had a lot of jobs that meant nothing that were, I mean, even the jobs that I talk about where I worked with a lot of different celebrities, who cares, right? It doesn't mean anything to me. What I wanted to do was either make a difference in the world or actually learn something about the world. So I wanted to either be like a geologist or a paleontologist or an archaeologist or an animal expert and, and like help make the world a better place in that way. Or I wanted to make the world a better place by like entertaining people. And so that's the one that ended up working. But if I wasn't doing that, then I would say, oh, let me go like discover a uh, fossil. Because to me, that's sort of when you're thinking about like what you want to do in life, like that's kind of making an impact, I think is kind of what people sometimes yearn for. Um, so yeah, uh, dog ear 83. Oh my gosh, dog ear. Stacy, I think it'd be fun if you could do an online book club of sorts, sort of like Bookcraft, just talking about book recommendations and such. You got me to read so much as a kid now. I'm definitely lacking in my reading. However, there's still some good books I love. That's interesting. Like, cause I've thought about bookcraft and I, I miss bookcraft but it's interesting to think about doing a book club as an adult sometimes I look back at like the pandemic and I think gosh I should have just like I should just opened a zoom for people like I should have just talked to people sometimes I think yeah that would I have a community we could have just hung out um maybe I should do a book club that's wild to think about but actually I wonder, I wonder. Molly, drinking again, you legend. You guys maybe can't even hear it. So I'm just like occasionally going, Molly's drinking, you guys. I don't, why am I even whispering? I'm whispering, aren't I? Okay, anyway. Um, Lone, Lone, Lona Star Magician? Are you ever gonna add Stacy's Wolves to a newer version of Minecraft? Having it on 112.2 would be nice. Uh, no, <laughs> sorry. Um, that was a 1.7.10 version of the mod. I'm sure that I could maybe find someone to do it. It's not really, I added Mystic Wolves to Bedrock. It When I would talk to people at different conventions, it was clear to me that the majority of people that watch my videos were Bedrock players, which kind of blew my mind because the majority of YouTubers are Java players. Um, so anyway, that's just, I, I, I put it on uh, the marketplace because then I am compensated for the work that I had to do to get it playable on Bedrock. That's not the case with Java mods. Um, I'm sure you could do like a site that paid for downloads or like a Patreon or something, but Marketplace just works out really well. And so we've put up Mystic Wolves and a Stacy Place skin pack. And we just put out the more pets kind of mod world, which is so cool because you can get like a pet bee and bat and they follow you around. Horses. Oh my gosh. Just having a horse follow you around is so life changing. Um, so anyway, sorry if you're disappointed. Um, the marketplace just seems like it's more sustainable going forward because it's easier to update them. Um, and I don't know how to do it um, for Java. And I'm, I'm just, again, it comes down to one of those things of like, what is what can I do with my time and it wouldn't it wouldn't um there's been a lot of things in Minecraft where like back in the day 
YouTube paid all of my bills. And so I could just go, what would be nice, like a nice thing to do for everyone? And it's, it's unfortunately not really like that anymore. Like I have to be a little bit more practical with my choices. Uh, okay. Petrified with a one. Just like you, my dream is to publish a book. I was wondering what you recommend to get there. Of course, I won't have the internet fame that you do. But if you hadn't, how would you approach that? How would you have approached that? Thank you for everything. Also, I love the keyboard sounds. I didn't use the good keyboard in this computer because I realized I'm, or in this video, because I realized I was missing a part. But I should in the next, or halfway through the next, because something happens in the next episode. Um, <laughs> Anyway, um, yeah, I took a weird way because I, I wanted to publish a book before I became a YouTuber. And then once I became a YouTuber, like, cause I had even consulted for a publisher back before I became a YouTuber thinking, oh, this is going to be my in. And then of course, as soon as you had the internet fame part of it, they were like, oh yeah, you can have a book deal. And it was, it was like, oh, okay. It's really tough to give suggestions in this day and age because I feel like it will be a difficult goal um, you have to have a really unique story I think and then you're gonna have to just send it everywhere you know you know the um, advice that I would recommend that I guess other people wouldn't know about the publishing industry but I do is that I do not think it matters the size of publishing house that you use like, if you go to a bookstore and you look at the shelves, there are smaller publishing houses that are stocking those shelves just the same as the big, whatever it is, the big five or something. Um, and so start by sending your work to the smaller publishing houses because I just don't think it matters. I really don't think it matters. If you have a good book and it gets published by someone, it will find its way into some bookstores, independent bookstores, even bigger bookstores. I really thought when I was younger that it had to be one of the fancy, fancy places in New York. And there are lots of smaller presses around the country, even international, um, that you could potentially try as an avenue to get published. And then from there, that might lead to more. Uh, that would be my advice. Dusty Cabinet. Hey, Stacy, You've been a major inspiration for most of my life. And thank you so much for that. You're truly an amazing creator. My question is, if there was any feature or mob you would like to add to Minecraft, what would that be? No limitations to this question. It could be as simple or as complex as you like. Gizmo and Gadget, love you, my pets. Um, I'm going to keep it simple. I would say craftable name tags. Like that's my every marketplace product that we put out. I'm like, it has to have craftable name tags because, or just an easy way to obtain name tags other than currently, because it's not fair. Um, I don't know why that there's not nether uh, fence gates. That's ridiculous. There should be nether fence gates. Um, I was thinking about mobs the other day because I feel like Minecraft likes to add real animals, which I, I love. But I was thinking like, okay, some of these wolf variants seem like a like an African wild dog or a hyena, but there's not really a mob that's I would attribute to like the African continent. Like we have pandas, we've got polar bears, we've got like llamas. There's a lot of continents represented. If you think about like lions, elephants, giraffes, rhinoceros, hippopotamus, um, like that's a lot of gorillas. I would add gorillas. That's the one I would add a new kind of forest. <laughs> this is just like, I could, probably could have thought of a cool feature, but I just go straight to the mobs. I would add a new biome and it would be like uh, the misty forest or something. Like it would be like a forest with fog or something in it. And it would have gorillas. Easy. Easy. Uh, Ever. Hey, Stacy, I've been a fan for years. I have several of your books and I had one of your tote bags I used for Halloween a while back. Oh, I was just wondering. Such a random question, but what are some of your favorite things to do on a daily basis? Would you ever go back to vlogging? 
I've wanted to post on my vlog channel for quite some time. I don't think I would post a vlog, but I would post like um, little contained videos. Favorite things to do on a daily basis. Feed my birds. <laughs> um, pet Molly. Um, that's, I feel like I take a lot of baths. I guess that's a weird thing to admit, but like people are surprised when I tell them this, but I'm, I, I bathe. Like I, I probably take less than, I probably take, I probably take like five showers a year. <laughs> like not that I am not clean. I just bathe. Maybe that's like a, a luxury YouTuber thing, but I bathe I really really do I don't know I take a shower like if I've gone skiing or if I've done yard work and I'm I'm dirty as often as sometimes I'll take a quick shower and then get in the bath <laughs> but um I like to, I don't do that on a daily basis though that was the question what do I do on a daily basis I try to write in my journal and I feed my birds and I don't know. I'm old. I try to stretch on a daily basis. Uh, Cathal H. That name sounds familiar, actually. Hi, Stacy. I'm presuming you visited a lot of the national parks in the U.S. and was wondering which was your favorite and why. Oh, great question. Um, uh, I have visited a lot of national parks, I guess. I visited, um... A lot of the West Coast, not not that many actually, because I'm a repeat offender. I like to go back instead of going to new ones. So the ones that I go to the most are like Zion, Bryce Canyon, uh, Yellowstone, Grand Teton, Glacier. Is that it? It's kind of it. I've been to Shenandoah. I've been to uh, Mammoth Cave. I've been to Olympic. Well... Actually, that's not even true. I've been, like, around Olympic. Um, so, no, there's a ton more on my list. But I love Glacier. I love Glacier and I love Yellowstone. I would say Glacier and Yellowstone are my favorites. I like, um, in Yellowstone, there's a great, like, um, it might be closed now. It was called Firehole. And it was a hot spring that you could swim in. And in Glacier, I love just going to Lake McDonald. Uh, Crinkle Fry, can you talk about your Minecraft field trip series? I loved watching it and was so excited to see more biomes and it sort of just stopped. Love you. Oh gosh, do I, do I want to admit this? Um, so the first one was sponsored by YouTube and it was very exciting that I got to do it and I would have done more, but YouTube, this is the case with a lot of the content that they funded back in those days they wanted to keep funding new creators and so I don't even know if I asked them but it was just kind of assumed that I wasn't going to get to do more with them so I funded the next one and it was I could have bought a car let's just say that um it was a lot of money and I went and I filmed it and it was great and then a lot of bad things happened to loved ones in my personal life that I was helping with um, just a lot of stressful medical events with people and pets and I gave the footage to someone to try to edit it wasn't something that I could edit myself because it was shot on like a professional camera and I did not even know how to use those kind of files unfortunately and um I mean, the, the short story of it is that I didn't like the way I looked in a lot of the footage. And I don't know, I dropped the ball and then so much, like a year passed and I didn't do anything with it. And I just, like, if I could, I would eventually hire someone to do it and just put it up anyway. And, and I'll look, you know, 10 years younger in it and that'll be great. So maybe I'll still upload it. Jason G Joka 5157. Is there a finished Minecraft series on your channel that you miss the most? Uh, probably Mystic Mesa because I just love Poganip so much and I never made a T-Rex. 
So, but I was gonna have to have an iron farm. And iron farms in Minecraft are so sad. But I probably was gonna have to have an iron farm in order to make the paddock for the T-Rex. But I would have loved to have made all the dinosaurs. And that was in series that just kind of like, I feel like people stopped watching it on my channel and then I started streaming it, but then people didn't really care about it there. And then, you know, it's just one of those things where there's probably someone out there who's like, it was my favorite and you killed it. And I, I like, I'm sad too. I'm sad too. <laughs> Austin, was there ever a time you wish you never started YouTube? Follow up question, if yes, what made you feel better? If no, what is your favorite part of the experience? Love you. Yeah, sure. I mean, I, I kind of didn't, I didn't intentionally start YouTube. I was on other people's vlogs and playing Minecraft on other people's channels and then made a YouTube channel so that I could comment back to people who were commenting about me. Um, I don't wish that I had never started YouTube because it gave me a lot of like financial stability. You know, this isn't something I've talked about. I think I have, but not often is that I got, I was involved in like two corporate layoffs. Um, one of which was just like a huge corporate takeover where my company bought another company and then laid off like 2000 people <laughs> and um and i didn't think i was part of it and then they were like oh no wait you are part of it and i was like are you sure because i have like all the passwords to everything and stuff and then like a couple like a month went by and they were like actually like we do need you back um and so that was a really sort of disheartening experience to be involved, to work so hard and to have a successful, um, like to be successful in my job. And then it just didn't matter because there was a big, like this company bought a company, like I was in Washington DC and the company expanded in New York and they cut all the people that lived in DC and it felt just so random. And then I was involved in a very personal kind of layoff in Los Angeles where I just didn't get along. I didn't get along with um, this company that that my company had also bought. Again, it was like the same situation almost, um, but there was like a kind of a power struggle. And, um, and I found out that I was gonna lose my job and that was okay because I kind of didn't love it. But again, it was, it, it's hard not to take those things personally and to go, shoot, I don't know that I, you know, fit in in the corporate world. I'm a creative and I, I'm very, very sort of confrontational is not the word, but I'm, I'm very direct and sometimes people don't like that. Um, so YouTube has given me the opportunity to not work with others. <laughs> it's just like only child stuff, like does not play well with others. Um, so no, I don't, I don't actually regret it. And it, it gave, it gave me a lot of cool experiences and it gave me the ability to help a lot of my family. Um, Morgan, what has been your favorite thing you have done recently with Molly? You know, during the pandemic, I snuck her into a drive-in theater, um, under some blankets and that was really fun. Cause like, why shouldn't a dog be able to go in your car to a drive-in theater? That's a dumb rule, to be honest. Like they should say that you can, but your dog can't get out of the car. I'm sure that that's the reason why, but it was like, she never got out of my car. So of course I was gonna sneak her in. That was a really fun memory. Um, she absolutely did not care that she was at a drive-in theater. Um, and the movie was A Quiet Place 2. Um, or wait, or no, it might've, no, I snuck her in twice. Cause I also took her to Indiana Jones. Fun times, Molly. And then I also, this is, this, these aren't recent, but I took her to Glacier National Park and she's just the most adorable. She comes with me to the ranger talks and like sleeps on the benches in the amphitheater. And she's just the cutest little junior ranger. So she's, a, she loves camping. Like she doesn't. She doesn't, I don't think she knows that she's camping. She just loves being outside. So she just loves being outdoors and 
Um, and that's all camping is, right? So she just she just does really well there. Okay, Avaturchin. Oh my gosh, I didn't say that right. Hi, Stacy. I would love to hear your cool mechanical keyboard. Also, for the mining trip next week, could you talk about your writing process as an author? I love the series and you. Oh, I don't have an answer for this. Uh, my writing process. Um, if I could, I'd write by typewriter. <laughs> um, I actually have... I can talk about this, actually, with my process. I actually have a typewriter that is sort of like it goes... It saves to the, like, cloud... And so it's it's different from typing on your computer because when you're typing on your computer, you can get distracted. You can open a browser window. You can just go onto YouTube or you can write something and then go like read it again and go, oh, I don't like that. Or I'm going to edit that or I'm going to rewrite that. But on the typewriter, you just have to keep writing and you can't really, you can go back like a sentence or two, but that's it. So I actually think, was it book three in Wild Rescuers? Or was it book four? If I think about the plot, I'll remember. I think it was book three. I actually wrote all of book three on like a the typewriter device like that. The first draft. And then you bring it onto your computer and you can revise it. But... I find that really helpful, actually. Okay, Clara slash Clover. If you were to revisit Bookcraft, what books would you build for now? Ah, uh, that's tough. I would love to revisit Bookcraft. I, I just, I really wish I could. I feel like, because people always said I should build from my books, but I think I would build from, I think I would build the, the book, did I ever announce this? The, the book that I was dying to do on Bookcraft that I was, well, I was going to do Alice in Wonderland for the longest time because that's why I had a spawn near a mushroom field. My library and book craft was like in a mesa next to a meadow next to a mushroom field. And the mushroom fields was for Alice in Wonderland. And there was going to be a whole like dog craft Nilla wafer crossover. It was going to be crazy. I should, I should just do a video someday about all the things I meant to do. But yeah, the book that I wanted to do more than anything in Bookcraft was The Phantom Toll Booth. That was my book as a kid. So, I don't know. Sometimes I want to do, like, vlog videos where I read books. Like, um, there was a book that absolutely traumatized me as a kid. Um... And I don't even remember why it traumatized. It just sent me into like an existential crisis, like in the third grade. I think it was Tuck Everlasting. Um, and I would just be so interested to read it now as in a full adult and go, is this still, an, is this still gonna, you know, give me an existential crisis? Anyway. Lauren, does the updates to Minecraft ever put you off the game or does it make you want to play more, give you ideas for series? <sighs> you know, it's really interesting this having so many people correct me on things in this series because I didn't realize enough time had passed that I didn't keep up with all the updates. So, like, I don't know how to get an amethyst shard, clearly. Um, it doesn't ever put me off the game. I'm kind of in awe of how... People give Minecraft a lot of... I think that people always are unhappy with updates. These are real people who are adding these things to a complex code. And I, I'm i really excited by it. I love Minecraft. And I, I think that Minecraft will always be a part of my life. And I have enjoyed being able to talk to people on my book tours who speak Minecraft. Does that make sense? Like I talk a lot of times to people who are either very young kids or very shy kids or kids who have um, differences in the way that they communicate with other people. And we speak the same language. And I have had parents go, mm, my kid probably isn't going to talk to you very much. 
And then five minutes later, we're just having the best conversation about Minecraft. And and that's so cool. Okay. Uh, Slay D, what kind of music and artist do you like? I might be making this up, but I vaguely remember you posting your Spotify rap and I saw Mitski. Stacy is a Mitski fan. Uh, yeah, I'm, I love Mitski. Um, I got introduced to her music maybe five years ago. I saw her in concert, um, at Red Rocks maybe also five years ago, almost now. I don't even know how to answer that question. I grew up in the eighties and nineties. My parents introduced me to a lot of music from the sixties. Um, I, what was the question? What kind of music and artist do you like? So I like, um, I don't know. I kind of am someone who just like liked what I liked in college and then never stopped listening to that stuff. So, um, I listened to a lot of the killers. I've seen the killers in concert, like, I think like five times. Um, every album because I, I started with their first album I, I had their first album and have just never stopped listening to their music um so that's that's probably my favorite band of all time um I listen to a band called Keen quite a bit um a band called Rooney um who else Hello Goodbye I was pretty Im- obsessed with oh okay go their first album the one with um like return and uh don't ask me oh jimmy world i was a huge jimmy world fan i've seen them in concert a couple times too i liked a lot of i guess those are a lot of um male fronted bands i suppose oh the temper trap i was a big oh passion pit and now i guess i've listened to um Lately, I've been listening to uh, Shakira's new album. I was a big Shakira fan. I remember I, like, in Spanish class, like, when I was in middle school, I memorized all the words to Estoy Aquí, (laughs) Um, which I think I still know. Uh, And then her album Laundry Service came out when I was in college, and I thought it was, like... (laughs) This is honestly, when did the series become Stacy embarrasses herself? I thought it was the funnest, like coolest thing to listen to Shakira's laundry service album while I went to the basement of my freshman dorm to do my laundry. Because, you know, in a lot of college dorms, you have to go down to a laundry room where there's like lots of washers and dryers and sometimes you have to stay there because people will get very mad at you if you don't take out your laundry immediately when it's done and put it in the dryer like some people will even like remove your wet laundry and just put it on a table so that they can use the washer um i could just imagine like if that's not how college works anymore someone being like oh my gosh like who would do that But that's how it worked when I was in college. And so I just thought I was like being so cool to listen to, because you know, it's like a washing machine on the album of the CD. Um, So I I would literally bring my disc man downstairs and listen to, so, but what's crazy now is that if I hear that album, I am instantly transported to my college dorm's laundry room which is so crazy. So anyway, lately I've been listening to Shakira's new album and I've also gotten into uh, Chapel Roan. Okay, I think that's it. Oh, that was exciting. I was unprepared for it. Did I not get a phantom membrane after all that? I was not prepared for how claustrophobic I just got down there in the caves and I made two pickaxes. I never bring enough wood. I have to bring a stack of wood. Where am I? This is a meadow. What? Where am I? I mean, that was crazy. I figured I'd come up now because I have, you know, my shield was gonna break. There's jungle. Hmm. There's iron. 
That was mostly what I was after. 27 diamonds, though, and slime balls. I'm pretty happy with myself. I feel like. I haven't gotten pumpkins, I don't think, yet. Uh. Yeah, I don't know. That was, um... I need to make a compass, and I need to make a clock. But that was, I think, a good... I think that's a good mining trip. I mean, I certainly got a lot of iron and gold and redstone and diamonds. Yeah, this is familiar. Golly, I'm really far away. Am I... I think I'm... Maybe that way? Maybe? Oh, I wish I had my camel. Oh, wait, that's Savannah too. This is... Yeah, this is like where we spawned in, right? I would imagine cherry blossoms but doesn't that look like a much bigger cherry blossoms biome than the one that we found in the beginning of this series I don't know actually I really kind of just assumed I would find a mine shaft and I didn't so I always need to bring a stack of wood also um oh there's a broken portal up there why not I was going to say, also, uh, it's super dark. I'll probably brighten, maybe, the footage. I don't... I had to place torches so much. I mean, that's why I ran out of... Um, that's why I ran out of wood, because I kept making torches. So, I don't know. I, I mean, I started this world with no cheats. So, I increased my brightness, but I don't want to... I don't want to mess with my gamma. But that was crazy. I mean, honestly, I don't know how you can see in the new caves, to be honest. Okay, don't just fall into lava now. Can you hear Molly snorting? She's, oh, let me get these eggs. Oh, I can't pick up the eggs. She's got a weird snort going on today and I'm a little, ow, I'm a little worried about her, actually. I'm like, okay, you're gonna have to tell me oh, thorns. Hmm. I was like, you're gonna have to tell me if you're just extra snorty today or if I should be worried about you. Huh. What's tough, by the way? Curse of vanishing. Is that good for anything? Hey, why are you snorting? Little snorty. McSnorterson. Do I need a flint and steel for anything? Or rotten flesh, really? Molly, why are you snorting? Hey, we can make lanterns, right? Um, yeah, we gotta go home just because our pockets are full and I don't really want to get rid of anything. Thorns three? I mean, it has its place. I gotta make a new shield. Um... I mean, don't get me wrong. I thought I wanted granite, but I guess I don't really. Uh, Molly is a snorty dog. She has always been like that. I guess I don't need furnaces either. Um, and I thought I was like, oh, something's wrong with her. Like she's really snorting a lot. And then I gave her some cheese and she was like, oh, I'm fine. I can eat this, no problem. So. It's all lies once the cheese comes out, to be honest. We're gonna have a chicken farm with these eggs or pumpkin pie. I hate to, oh, that looks familiar. Is that just the mesa right there? I feel like it is. Um, but yeah, I don't know how you see in those huge caves without uh, a lot of torches. If that's not the Mesa, then what the? What did I do? That was weird. Did you know you could put? Uh, now you just you're just snoring now. Uh, I didn't know I could put water into a leaf block like that. Anyway, this is gonna have the soundtrack of Molly's snorts. I think it was a good mining trip, sheep. Yeah, that's Mesa. I can see our bridge, I think. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to get amethyst shards. It, 
turns out. <laughs> there's so much I don't there's so much I don't know, honestly, about Minecraft now, which is really a weird feeling, having sort of known everything about it for ten years. Uh, but I guess there's just been enough updates that I kind of paid attention to, but kind of not. That there's a lot that I don't know. Uh, because I have no idea how to get an amethyst shard. And I even looked it up. Ah, there's that camel hump. I don't know if I need a fortune pickaxe or... Like, because there, there are those amethyst blocks that look a little different, right? And I, I thought that breaking those would give me a chance. It's also just one of those things that I feel like I've gotten before. Like, easily? <gasps> I thought you had, like, despawned or something. Uh, yeah, I don't know. What to... Should we smelt stuff? Hello, camel. I'm going to be real organized here. I don't know if we need pumpkins. We'll smelt all of my copper. Pretty pleased with the slime and the diamonds. I feel like that was really good. I feel like we got some good stuff. And someone was telling me that you can see all the, oh, hello. You can see all of the, uh, everything if you're in a crafting table like this. So obviously I can make a clock now. What was I just going to look up, though? A lantern. Easy peasy. Actually, that's a lot of iron nuggets to waste, but I think it'll look cool. How do you, oh, how do you make chains? Uh, okay. Great. I also know that you can just make an iron nugget like this, right? I don't want people commenting, like, <laughs> that I was like, oh, look, I found iron nuggets, guys. We can finally use them. Do you guys want chickens out here? One. Oh no. You're all alone. You're all alone. Now that I have armor and I'm not afraid of dying with all this stuff in me, I kind of want to go raid the pillager outpost because someone said that we could get in a lay. Not that I have a single clue what you do with an LA. I have no clue. And maybe this is something that I should do in a different um, like maybe enough time has passed but I just I, I guess I don't feel like it has and so I'm like raid the pillager outpost now. Uh, oh we should make an armor stand too. Molly? Oh, see, she's trying to, like, eat her breakfast. But she just has, like, a weird... Feels like she just has a weird soft palate thing going on today. I don't love it, Molly. You know, I mean, the thing of it is, is that we need... And people were saying um, to go maybe trade with a Fletcher, I feel like is what people were saying for um to get more arrows i'm gonna just make some arrows here uh because i can i can make 12 and then how what is the recipe for a shield easy easy let's go um Listen, I have to clear something up because people were like, I think people were a little upset. They were saying, go get the horse. Um, and I'm not trying to have a lot of animals. And so like, I really wanted to have a camel. So do I need a horse? No. Should I bring the horse back and just have it as like a companion to my camel? No, that's a donkey. It's almost night. So I set the horse loose. I had a nice little goodbye. I can't, I can't please everyone. I'm sorry. I cannot please everyone. <laughs> it's a camel hump. It's just a camel hump. Don't worry about, I'm gonna, cause I'm gonna change the glass and the stripped wood. And 
I gotta like make it the best camel hump that it can possibly be. Right now it's still a little, it's a little mismatched and it might just need to be symmetrical. I feel like I started building being like, symmetry is not important and it turns out, yes it is. It really, really is. Uh, listen, we're just gonna go raid this pillager outpost just to kind of do something slightly adventurous in the episode because I feel like the mining went pretty easy. Except for that one time that I just was useless against skeletons. And I definitely could have, you know, I think I could have had a lot more diamonds if I had just explored that cave a lot more. I'm just super kind of bummed about the lighting situation. Uh, this might be a bad idea and we might die. But there's nothing, like, that's the beauty of going mining is that now there's not really anything that I would lose. I'd lose some armor, some iron. Oh, food. We have no food. We have no way to heal. And I'm not going to kill rabbits. We can kill some fish. But then we're going to eat it raw. We're dumb. Again, we're dumb. Always are. We always are. Also, I just don't know if this outpost had really not that many pillagers when I was oh, these armadillos in the desert that's cute oh there's some there are some well this is a bad idea with um with no oh my gosh ow buddy and now they all come over too now there's a lot of them. Don't have that many arrows to waste. I got that one. I'm really bad at like... Can this do a crossbow? <gasps> they do have a laze. They have a laze as prisoners. But I just don't understand what the purpose of an alay is. And I also have no food. This was a bad call. There's at least two more. And I don't have arrows and I don't have food. Why do I do these things? Why do I think, oh, I know a great way to end the episode. And then I guess I just thought, oh, I prepared. I'm, I got, I went mining and then promptly left all the stuff so that I have nothing. Uh, come here guys. I need food. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can I even eat tropical fish? Can you? That is like the saturation of a watermelon. That is really... Do we have to just go home? Is this a futile... This is really sad that this happened. I don't, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. I can't do this. And that's, I have to cook this. I have to cook this. I can't heal. Even if I cook these three fish, I'm probably not going to heal. Do you know what I mean? And I have to get stone first. And I don't have anything to power my furnace. I feel like now a bajillion of them have spawned in. What was I, honestly, what was I thinking? I was like, you know, there were like three pillagers. So that'll be really fast. And now I don't even have stone to make a furnace. I mean, this is, this is really sad. Do I just end the episode? <laughs> I should have done this. I'm going to come down and get a furnace. There we go. One. No. Two. Three. Four. Five. 
six, seven, eight, I think. This is this is just dumb because you can't even you can't even heal. You have to kill more fish or those rabbits. You can't you can't cook tropical fish. You all knew that, by the way. So we legitimately have no food source then because I mean we might as well go get watermelon at this point. I had pumpkins, I had, I bet that there's food to eat at the pillager outpost, but like we're going to die if we try to, and I keep sprinting. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I had a pet rabbit as a kid. Yeah, just, oh! It looked up at me. It looked up at me and was like, don't do it. Oh no, the horse with no name. He's still there just wandering the desert. Oh, that is sad. Oh guys, I don't want a horse. We could return him to the plains. That's the thing about not editing, is that if you want, I'll return. Well, so I'm confused because I just see one, he despawned. Is anyone here now? How do I take it over? Like, how do I just say like, this is mine now? Do I go inside? Is that how you take over a pillager outpost? Is it mine now? Like, do I have to put torches down or something? Or I'm at the top and there's no pillagers. Like, I did I defeat them? Oh, food. Really bad loot, by the way. Uh, yay, we did it! Yay, we're awesome! What's the point of an LA or two? I don't know. And do they follow you? Because so in an episode that has not yet aired of something called New Life, I um, I get in LA and then I, I give one something and it follows me. But the other one, I don't give anything. And so it just leaves. Oh! Hey, buddy! Didn't you get the memo? Where are you? This isn't great. <gasps> I wasted an arrow. Just don't move, okay? There we go. Oh no. Guys, I really thought that we uh, conquered you. I wish I had some lava. Wouldn't that be like super medieval to just dump some lava on their heads? Should we go down and say hello to them? I don't know what to do. <gasps> he's here! He's here! Oh, that was easy. Hi, buddies. Okay, so like, does something actually happen where- Ah! Does something actually happen when we kill all of them? Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Can I just flood their outpost? Can they swim? Oh. Well, we don't have that much food left, so we have to kill them expeditiously. Ah! Come here, come up here. Like, come up and... Yeah, 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 yeah. Like that. Great.
Okay, I hear like three more. Oh, you can hit me like that. Okay, no, no, no. Just drown. Ah! I made them a water elevator! No! No, it's getting night! Oh my golly. Ah! Ah. I'm not using my shield! I had my shield that whole time! And I didn't use it! Oh my gosh. Okay, wait, are they dead? Are they all dead? No, I hear another one. No, it's almost night now. Ah! Oh, use my shield, use my shield. Hi, guys. They're shooting each other. That's nice. Oh my golly. Eat a carrot! Eat a carrot! Heal! Okay, are they all dead? I feel like they must all be dead now. Oh, there's salmon out there that we can get and kill. Oh my golly. Did we do it? Are they all... Are they all dead now? No! Can I use a shield in water? It's a pretty good swimmer. Oh, I hear one behind me, I think. Oh my gosh! What have we done? Just swim away! This is the worst ever! There's so many! Do they just keep spawning until you kill all of them? Oh. Okay. Well. I see four more now. Come on. Shoot yourselves. A bad idea. This is a very bad idea. This is a bad idea. We need to leave. We need to leave. We're gonna die. We gotta cook up our salmon. Our two salmon. I thought that... Okay, here's here they are. This is bad, guys. Well... Alright, four salmon. I don't know. I'm covered in arrows. Here they come. Am I, am I not editing this? <laughs> oh, you're fast! You're fast when you're on land! Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, we should have grabbed our salmon. Nice. Do your worst! Ha ha! Oh my gosh, could it not be nighttime right now? I don't, I'm not convinced that you can conquer these. Because we just killed a bunch of them. They keep spawning in. The allays are- ah! You scared me! You scared me! Is there a way to conquer your your outpost? 
And where did the, the allays are gone? Like the allays despawned. Or maybe there was another allay dungeon. There they are. Well, okay, I see another guy though over here though. I don't wanna un I don't wanna set you guys free though, because I don't think you do anything. Okay, I oh well, I heard another. I'm just not convinced. I'm not convinced that there's a way to to defeat them. Like I don't know. Is it? Am I gonna get an achievement once I've killed enough of them? Or do they just always spawn in outposts? What did you drop? I mean, I just don't think. I get, I get that there's a lays. I just don't think that we've done it. Or maybe we have done it. Guys, I'm going to have to Google, like, I don't, I don't know how to use you. If I give you fish, I don't have anything exciting to give you. What is the point of an allay? I should know this by now. This is old, I know. Allay Minecraft. Do I have to give you something in order for you to be useful? And then, is that even that useful for you just to hold something for me? Collects and delivers item for a player. Gives it something. Uh, okay. Texture. Okay, I'm just gonna give you fish? Do you want cooked f No, I have to have the cooked fish. So I'm gonna give you wheat you're gonna be my wheat allays is that exciting i don't think so uh do i drop it or do i hand it to you there you're holding wheat let's go let's go i don't know why wait i should definitely make bread I mean, I think you're kind of creepy. I'm not gonna lie, your your sounds. I'm gonna have to goof. Oh, there's another guy. Wait, would you guys like? Okay, wait. You guys can't fly out. I'm gonna go kill this other guy. Just because I'm not convinced that there's not a way to to defeat this outpost. Like villagers don't just keep spawning in. How do I, do I have to remove a banner? Do I have to, you know? Do I have to look this up too? Defeat. Defeat. Pillager. Outpost. People are going to be like, guys, the game is not. Run into the building, grab what you kill the captain sniper tactic but but there's no <laughs> I just don't think that there's a uh, I don't think that they've gamified this like I don't think you can successfully finish I could be wrong I could be wrong my little wheat guys, my wheaties, and I. Oh, I heard another one. I don't want you guys to die, so let's just go. Oh, he's right here! No, this is bad! My allays are gonna die! You gotta die, okay? You're gonna kill my allays. Alright, let's go. Scoot. Oh! Oh! That's an armadillo. How many LAs? One, two. Like they're just bringing me my wheat and I don't know why, you know? I don't know why they're just bringing me my wheat. There's the camel hump. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna round off the back side of it. It sounded weird of my camel hump and um 
I mean, I should, I should make a sustainable food source, whether it's pumpkin pie with a sugarcane farm and chickens. Or a wheat farm. I love, you guys are probably like, why, why would you get two allays and not the horse that you abandoned in the desert? I don't know. I don't know. And this is probably hour, this is probably two hours long because I, I felt like I had to make this a whole episode with the mining and the pillager outpost, which I just didn't have to. I don't, I don't know why I did this. I don't know why. Like, I don't even think my parents are gonna like a Lay's. Come on in, guys. All right, we've got the Wheaties here. I don't know why. Do they teleport? Like, if I trap them in here, that's one thing. But are they gonna just keep teleporting to me with their wheat? I don't know. I have no idea. Okay, well, listen, I'm gonna organize all my chests. You know, someone said for aesthetics, I should have used barrels. And I completely agree with that comment. And, oh, someone also told me that I mined into an archeology span thing at the desert temple that I could go back and, and use a brush on. Uh, but I didn't have copper, I don't think, so now I do, or I didn't have something else. Listen, <laughs> it's kind of weird how it's like, okay, well, I don't want to use chests now, I want to use barrels, and I don't want to use torches now, I want to use lanterns. I don't want to use regular logs, I want to use stripped logs. I can't keep up. I can't keep up. Allay. Don't badger my camel. Well, anyway. Listen, all I know is that this series is about wolves. Where's my chicken? Oh, okay, good. I'm gonna have to go get more eggs so I can... Do I... Wait, do I have more eggs? We need a chicken farm if we're gonna do... Um, pumpkin pie. I think I... I don't think I have more eggs. Yeah, okay. That's fine. I'm gonna smelt all this raw copper. I don't know why. Because we'll make a cool roof eventually. I have a Lay's. Maybe tell me what to do with them. I'm also happy if you tell me that there's nothing to do with them. I don't know. It's to me, I don't understand the point of them. But I know the point of view, Robin. I know the point of view. We gotta get more wolves. We gotta like, I don't know. It's about getting the wolves, but now I've started all these projects where I wanna expand my base. And then I guess set sail with the wolves. I don't know. What? I don't know. I'm just gonna go. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> Until next time. Paige and Molly love you. Go rescue a dog.